ResaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including the robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the concrete member design functionality in ResaCalc. So here we already have a beam added. I'm going to go first into our properties. And we can see the material and the material type as well. We can see some properties of that particular material type. Could also set the size of the member. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a 16 inch deep by 12 inch wide member. If I click the properties here, we can see all the concrete geometric properties that are calculated. Next, we can go ahead and set our rebar grade and then decide if we want to explicitly define the rebar, maybe if we're doing a review of a current member or we can optimize if we're doing some new design. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our flexural reinforcement here and we can see just the interface changes to kind of an image of that flexural reinforcement layout. So we can go ahead and change the bar size just by clicking on something and the selections made in the properties. Maybe in this case, we want to go ahead and change the clear cover. So maybe I'll make the top clear cover three inches because it's exposed to uh, earth. Before we go ahead and move the properties, I can go up to our global settings and we can look at our concrete codes in this case. So we can see the concrete codes that are available to us. We can also see some basic concrete settings. So some stress options, and uh, also minimum and maximum steel percentage for the columns. Once we've gone ahead and set up the properties, I'm gonna go ahead and click on span. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and make these both fixed conditions, and I'm gonna change the span to 12 feet. So we've got a fixed, fixed concrete beam in this case. Now, if I go to design, I'm gonna leave this eye crack factor at 0.35, and then I'm gonna proceed to loads. So let's go ahead and first add some point loads. So I'm gonna add in some dead loads, let's call them two and a half kips, and let's put this at the four foot location. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another point load, a dead load, two and a half kips again, and let's put this at eight feet. Now we can see at any time if we needed to change the location here, I could actually just click on the dimension and maybe change that to nine feet if I wanted to. Now let's go ahead and add our distributed loads. So I'm gonna to click to add a distributed load. In this particular case, let's go ahead and add in a linearly variable distributed load. So from one half kip to one and a half kips per linear foot. And let's make this a live load in this case. And we'll put this along the entire length of the member. Now, all the while the load combinations have been created. So we've got some dead and live load load combinations. And so when we're ready, we can go ahead and click to toggle on the unity check. Now the design has been completed. We can see that we've got the governing load combination and the governing code check. I'm gonna minimize the detailed report right now. And let's go ahead and turn off the loads so we can see some of our results. So in this case, we have on the deflections as well as the reactions. And if we use the mouse here, we can see the deflections at different locations along the length of the member. So we can identify various deflections along its length. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off reactions and deflections. We can go look at the moment diagram as well as the shear diagram. And we can do the same thing seeing the different results along the length of the member. Now, when we're ready, we can go ahead and expand the detailed report. And so the detailed report has a lot of the same information that we've already seen in the properties and the design criteria. So we can go ahead and look at stuff like loads or some of our load diagrams. The biggest or nicest thing about the reports is the calculation tab. So here we can look at step-by-step -step all the calculations. So in this case, we're looking at top bending. We can see how the top bending steel is calculated in each span, in this case, um, looking at just span one, bending check at the top end, bending check at the other end, and for the unity check. We could also go ahead and look at some torsional information if we had any torsion, or finally at rebar detailing. And so we can see the rebar as it's defined in this particular member. Next, let's go ahead and add a column. So I'm going to go ahead to click the plus key to add a uh, column of, of concrete. And then I'm going to go ahead to properties. Let's change our material to concrete. In this case, let's choose a circular column, make this a 12 inch diameter. And again, we can go ahead and open up our options here. Maybe we want to change our flexural size of our bar. So let's make this a number five bar. We can maybe change the clear cover or keep it the same. We can also go ahead and change the span. In this case, I'm going to leave a fixed condition at the bottom. And let's make this uh, again, a 12 foot span. So we've got that 12 foot span there. Now, if I go to design, we have a few more options for concrete column design. So I'm gonna say, I wanna fully brace this member along its length for out of plane. We could also change some of our other factors, uh, whether or not the frame is sway in or swaying out of plane, but let's go ahead and leave those the same and go to loads. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add some point loads. So I'm gonna add first a dead point load of 10 kips 
And I'm going to put this at the 50% location. Let's turn on our load so we can see them. And we need to make sure we get the direction right so it's vertical. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another load of 15 kips in the live load and vertically at the top of the column. Finally, let's go ahead and add a wind load. So I'm going to add a distributed wind load of 0.5 kips per linear foot to 2 kips per linear foot. And we're going to apply that wind load in the horizontal direction as we have here. And again, all the wind load combinations or all the combinations in general have been created here. Now, if I go ahead and click the check mark, we're going to toggle through the unity check to see our controlling unity. So I'll minimize the detailed report. And we can see first our moment diagram in this case. We can see our axial diagram. So we've got our axial diagram in this controlling load combination. And now if we wanted to see this, we could go ahead and look at it differently. Maybe we want to look at dead plus live. So we can see our axial diagram for dead plus live. So we've got our live load at the top and our dead load here at the bottom. We could switch back to our governing load combination and turn on our moment diagram or our deflection or even our reactions. I can also open up the detailed report. Again, look at things like our load combinations, our reactions, or even our calculation steps. So again, if we go ahead and look at our bending unity check, we can see the calculated unity check for bending for this particular member, including all the information and all the equations filled in, as well as references from the code, in this case, from ACI. We can also go ahead and look again at the rebar detailing, just like we did for the beam. So we can see our column interaction diagram, as well as our rebar detailing. Now, when we're ready, we can go ahead and click this download button to download a report here. This is just going to create for us a PDF that we could then review later or send to a code official or another engineer to review. And so if I go ahead and open up that PDF report, we can just see step by step all the PDF information for this particular column. And this information can be used during the review process. Thank you for watching this video on concrete member design in RISA Calc. For more information about RISA Calc and RISA, visit RISA.com.